Hello and welcome to Classic Worship Online. Wherever you are, would you just join right in with us as we sing some of these great old songs of the church.
tell you a story. It's a story about a small town that for many years, and, and as long as anybody could remember, this town had been dry, meaning there hadn't been any alcohol served in this town. But then a local businessman decided that he was going to build a bar, a tavern. 
A group of Christians gathered together from a local church, and they were so concerned they planned an all-night prayer gathering uh, and asked God to intervene on their behalf. And it just so happened shortly thereafter that this, uh, this tavern was struck by a bolt of lightning and burned to the ground. The owner of this tavern sued the church, claiming that their prayers were responsible for his tavern burning down. But the, the church hired a lawyer and they said that, that that can't possibly be the case. So the judge, after reading uh, both sides of the story, uh, made this statement. He said, no matter how this case comes out, one thing is clear. The tavern owner believes in the power of prayer and the Christians do not. Today, I, I wanna address the topic of prayer and two especially important aspects when it comes to prayer. And especially in this time right now, these challenging times we're living in, I believe these disciplines can help us. And what I'm talking about today are, are ways that we can position ourselves so our prayers can be more effective. Let's begin. The first thing I think is when we pray, we need to pray humbly. We need to pray humbly. You see, when I pray humbly, I'm saying, God, I don't deserve this. I'm praying humbly. Psalm 86, verse 16 to 17 says, Turn to me and have mercy on me. Show me your strength in be on behalf of your servant. Save me because I serve you just as my mother did. Give me a sign of your goodness, this, that my enemies may see it and be put to shame. For you, Lord, have helped me and comforted me. You see, David's prayer here is permeated with humility. He doesn't angler, angrily demand better treatment from God in light of, of course, that he was the chosen king. He doesn't complain. Rather, he prays, God, would you be gracious? He admits that he's afflicted. He's, he admits that he's needy. He admits that his, we, his weakness by asking God to grant him strength. He's praying for things he realizes he doesn't understand and he doesn't deserve. You know, a few years ago, my wife and I bought tickets to uh, a concert uh, to hear a, a Christian band play uh, in a local uh, arena. Now, I will admit when I go to a concert, I'm kind of a cheapskate. I always like to go and hear live music. I love going to hear live music, but I love to buy the very cheapest ticket available. And I just think it's a victory when I get inside the building. So that was the case uh, for this time. I, I bought the, the cheapest tickets available. I looked at the ones that were at the front of the room and they were two or three times as much as the ones that I had purchased. So we got our tickets, we, that night comes, we, we drive to the arena, we, we start uh, entering the building, and then as we're walking up the stairs, I, re I look at my tickets and I realize my tickets are literally the worst tickets in the entire building. I'm sitting at the very back, my, behind me is, is a wall of concrete, there, you can't sit any farther back, and every single person in this arena was in front of me. That's how far back I was. I sat down in my chair next to a, a, another couple and I lean over to the guy next to me and I say, man, we sure are at the back of the bus here, aren't we? He says, yeah. He says, would you like to sit at the front of the bus? And I looked at him with a puzzled look on my face and he pulls out of his pocket two tickets, front row center. He said, my wife and I won these on the, on the radio station after we had already purchased tickets. And, and my wife has a headache. She doesn't want to sit at the front of the arena. Would you like our tickets? So I exchanged my back of the bus tickets for his front of the bus tickets. And I walked down, walked onto the floor and walked to the very front of the arena. And I turned around and I realized my old tickets, I could see everybody who was in the arena. They were in front of me. My new tickets, I could only see the band because I was sitting at the very front of the arena. You see, prayer can be like that. We receive something we didn't earn. I didn't call the radio station to, to win those tickets. I didn't do anything. I didn't pay for them. Those tickets were given to me. We realize that God longs to answer our requests. God longs uh, to answer the request of a humble heart. We realize we've done nothing to deserve what God has given us. That's humility. You know, I remember a sermon from Pastor Darren a little while ago when he likened being humble to having both feet firmly planted on the ground. People who have both feet on the ground uh, don't usually put things in print for everyone to read like, like David did here earlier in Psalm 86. 
David was a king. David had an image to maintain. Uh, Kings need to convey that they're in control of the situation. Kings need everyone to know that they know how to solve the problems. But David humbly acknowledges his weakness and his need for God's strength. You see, prayer isn't asking God for, uh, you know, a little boost, you know, like we get from a cup of coffee. It's, it's, not, a, it's not a shot of, of adrenaline like we might get from, from, from a chocolate bar, you know, when we, when we take it in at the end of the day. Prayer wasn't designed to be like that. It's not fuel to get us through a race like a bottle of Gatorade. It wasn't designed to make us more alert. Prayer is not a jolt of energy. Prayer actually is something that affects us in a deeper way. It's something more, a little bit more like this. And now here you're saying, oh, there you go, Pastor Paul, selling that steps journal again. But I really think that a continual dialogue between us and our Savior is really a better picture of what prayer is. Now, if you do want to pick one of these up, you can call our church office and we'd love to get one of these into your hands for the price of printing. Prayer in praying humbly is the first thing. The second thing that I think is a great way to position ourselves in this time uh, when it comes to prayer is praying in faith. When we pray humbly, we're saying, I know I don't deserve it. But when we pray in faith, we're saying, I know he can do it. Psalm 86, verse 13 says, For great is your love towards me. You have delivered me from the depths. When we pray in faith, we are praying with a clear memory of what God's activity has been in our life. Praying in faith is not a matter of closing your eyes to what's going on around us. It's not leaping into the dark. Praying in faith rests on what God has revealed about his character and the many instances in our lives where he has answered our prayers. Think about this in in terms of praying for healing. Why do we pray for healing? Because the life of Jesus uh, is full of stories of him healing people. And then we have this crazy verse in, in John 14 where it says, where Jesus tells us that we will do greater things because he's gone to the Father, greater things than he's done. But we also pray for healing because we have seen God heal. Many of us listening uh, to this message have been healed or know someone who has been healed. We have a clear memory of what God has done in Scripture as well as a clear memory of what God has done in our lives. We pray with a clear memory of God's activity and we pray with a clear confidence in God's purposes. Praying with a clear confidence in God's purposes means we aren't commanding or ordering God around. We don't get to boss him around. Even Jesus prayed in Luke uh, chapter 22, verse 42, says, yet not my will, but yours be done. Praying with a clear confidence in God's purposes means we rest on God's power and abundant love. Praying with a clear confidence in God's purposes uh, knows that if something is for our good and for God's glory, he will do it. See, prayer that pleases God requires more of the heart and less of the tongue. We haven't talked actually too much about words today. God isn't looking for flowery words when we pray. God is looking for an intense, earnest, continually thankful, humble, and faith-filled people who will count it a privilege to carry everything to God in prayer. Now, as we close today, I want you to think about something that you are praying for. Now, I, I, want, I want you to face that request. Maybe it's a fear. Maybe it's an attitude. Maybe it's a financial hurdle. Maybe it's a physical healing. Maybe it's a loved one and what they're going through. I want you to face that fear. I don't want you to turn away from it. I want you to face it. Even if it means that tears come to your eyes and that feeling comes to your heart. I want you to face that fear. I want you to feel the pain. I want you to feel the challenge of looking at that mountain. And now what we're going to do in the midst of that pain, and I would encourage you wherever you are to hold your hands out in front of you. I'd encourage you to to offer that pain, offer that challenge to the Lord, knowing that God is here and God is listening and God cares about this even more than you do. God, today we bring our requests before you, not as a list, not demanding, wagging our finger, but we do so humbly and we do so in faith. 
We know we don't deserve anything from you because uh, you have done everything for us, but we also know that you love us with an everlasting love. And so God, as we stare into the, into the face of the pain or the hurt or the challenge in front of us, we ask that you would come close now, God, and that you would be in the middle of this pain, you'd be in the middle of this hurt, you'd be in the middle of this chaos, and that something good would come from it, and you would redeem these, these things, these hurts, these pains, and that your purposes would be furthered uh, in this situation, God. I pray that you would heal, you would restore, you would bring families back together, you would provide supernaturally, you would heal as only you can do. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thanks for joining us for our, uh, our Legacy Worship event today. Now, remember, if, if you'd like to give to Broadway Church, uh, you can do so in a number of different ways. We have online giving now. Uh, we have a text to give option. Uh, you can bring your, your tithes and offerings to the church during business hours. And all of those options and all of those ways that you can give, you can find by going to broadwaychurch.com slash give. God bless you guys, and thanks so much for being at our Legacy Worship event today.